Hey everybody, Coco here. I'm so excited to show you some of my experiments. Um, I was inspired by a piece of fabric I had that kind of looked like a Monet painting. And it put me in mind of some of my felt fiber experiments where you use a hook and you punch felt or fibers into felt and you create scenes. And I wondered if I could do something similar with the paper. So I simply use the linen paper and I mean check out the back of that. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> that again is that um, butterfly tea. But um, I want to walk you through what I did here. I had these chunky fibers and I spread them out and shredded them and did an underlayment here. I also started with some gradations of uh, paints and I laid all sorts of fibers from this. I just salvaged and spread them out. And I will certainly do another full length video on the process so we can play a little bit with how to, um, you know, see what else we can do with it. But very happy. It's got some 3D cush to it. I don't know if you can see that. Cushy, cushy, cushy. But um, as we go through these, I'm just going to ask myself, and you can also weigh in in the comments, what you think were hits and what you think were misses. So I did not lay any real herbs in here, but I did lay some real flowers. Those Tweedias, those showed up. Of course, the paint kind of overtakes them. But overall, I'm extremely happy with this experiment. We will revisit that. There's a lot of chenille in there, so it... it created a nice texture. Okay, so let's count this one for a win. Here's another win. Um, in a previous video, I talked about which papers I used, and I thought, let me try painting or um, adding paint and different elements to just plain parchment paper that had been used as an underlayment for a previous project. So it was basically scrap, but I had leftover glitter on the mat and it pulled that up and then I simply used my scraps of glue paper and I dropped a whole bunch of those in here so there are no real herbs or spices but you get the feeling that there is something herbaceous about this so that is a win <laughs> okay now here's another win and maybe a miss uh, real peony flowers. I let these air dry. If I put them in the microwave, I was afraid that um, they'd lose some of their dimension, but they'd also get browned. And that is exactly what happens. As soon as they hit paint, it browns them out. So, how was I able to get some of the pigmented flowers? Well, this is just a uh, broken down, deconstructed silk flower from the Dollar Tree. There are petals of that in here. They're very subtle, but a nice little warm um, element. And then these are actually paper flowers that I dropped in here, and they actually absorb some of the paint. So I think that is a hit. And what else? I have some of those in there. Oh, and then I also employed my technique of using these scraps as faux flowers. And one other thing I did do is add a fiber. Let me see if I can find you one. I don't have the color I use, but these are loop fibers. I just save all the scraps and I snipped the purple ones in here. So that adds quite a bit of texture movement. This also has the underlayment of herbs and flooded it with paint and as you can see it does a beautiful job even on the back side. So that is a win. Now let me show you a fail. I had somebody request a mulberry paper selection with gold glints and it just did terrible. The paper shredded. I tried to patch it with tea bags and I think this experiment worked out well. It does not get lost, but 
mulberry paper I would not use as an under paper. Just to embellish other papers would work. Okay, and let's see here. This is an experiment with, let's see, we had dryer sheets. <clears throat> you shred those and you lay those in there, but you can't really see them. They added texture, added a little fragrance, but they did not really add visually. This is old rayon curtains. They're antiqued, yellow with age. And I cut little bits in here. Again, can't really see it. You can see something created some bumpy texture. All right, now, this is kind of fun. Thought I would see how what 100% cotton would do. And I was given this mop head, it's an antique. And um, I simply shredded them into little corkscrews. You can see movement, but what I was hoping is 100% cotton that they would pick up the gold ink I laid in there and become kind of gold strings. That was a miss. And then I also have some cheesecloth that I had dyed. I stretched out little wispy bits in there. Can't really see it. So that was a miss. And I like to use threads. Those are in there somewhere, but you really can't see it. And I don't think it's because I flooded it with so much ink. This actually is far less ink than I usually use. Okay. And on the subject of these threads, save everything. So when you take and you fringe your little pieces, save all of that. Look at this. This is quite the the collection, wouldn't you say? And then I antiqued and turned those into little baubles. But um, save everything, see? There's a stash right there. And these actually uh, are 100% cotton. They do pick up the color. You just really can't see other than the movement and the paper. Very generous. Okay, so one other thing you want to consider is while you're sewing, save everything, and especially little pieces of yarn that are left over. <clears throat> I've got some experiments where I laid this down instead of feathers. I wanted to see what it would do. The shape held, but the color was overtaken. That was kind of a miss. Okay, let's see. What else? Um, again, I used my faux paper, floral paper strips to create some uh, floral elements. I laid in some paper doily lace, a lot of gold gilled ink, and this is also on that wrapping paper from Amazon. So um, some of it worked, some of it I overdid the blue. And here's another one that I worked with. This is an experiment with what do you call this, present confetti or these little iridescent shreds. I wanted to see what would happen. And I think because there's so much paint on here, it toned down the iridescence. But they certainly are festive. And I've got teal threads in there. Got my faux fetti florals. And you can see this creative dimension. And very pleased with that result. So the moral of the story is play, play, play. See what things are in your house and see, you know, what the results are. Some of it just might be, you know, happy accidents and um, you won't be able to recreate it. And some of it, you know, you might try Like with this, I would take those threads from the mop and I would soak them in the gold ink, let them dry and then lay them. See if that helps. So back to, uh, let's see, some of the other things I used, this packaging stuff. I think I told you I used that mesh. None of that really showed up. And even though this is very neutral, it does add some texture. You just really can't see it in either of those papers. 
I was so looking forward to seeing what those things would do. So, okay, um, stay tuned. I'm going to do a start to finish video on how to do these papers, this like nature paper. And I will do a whole separate video on like this felting technique. And I want to see what else I can create. Here's another one I'm working on. You can see a little bit more of the chenilles and I use more of the feathery yarns and a little bit different gradation for the landscape. But um, stay tuned. We will do a whole separate video on this. All right, this is Coco signing out. Happy crafting. And, um, you know, if you could subscribe, set the notification bell, and be mindful that I'll keep posting under the playlist for nature papers. Um, hopefully we'll get you crafting. All right, talk soon.